cut up your credit cards. Why? Dangerous? Aren't scissors dangerous? Listen, man. Scissors, fire, pillows. If you don't know what you're doing, everything's dangerous. Only suck at MCs cut up their CCs. Never cut up your leverage, you were taught wrong. Tap swiping and search till debt is all gone. From debt to wealth, what you talking about? You wanna use debt for wealth and get your cards out. And start smoking your loans like Smokey Robinson. Whether it's a car, your home, bro, it's all a sin. Ignorance is bliss. If you're a bank, you take a fool to school, but you can't make them think. Cut up the crazy and study your credit cards. Cut up the crazy and study your credit cards. Knowledge and Hey everyone, welcome back to the Blonde City Channel where this is your bridge to financial freedom. Today we're going to go ahead and bust up all three myths of using your credit card. And what better way to bust up these myths by illustration, by demonstration, right? And you've heard it before, right? Credit cards are a financial trap, right? Credit cards lead to debt. You can't build wealth with credit cards where we're going to tear them up. But before we do that. I want you to like, share, and subscribe so that everyone around the world can know about Velocity Banking and the power it wields. Are you ready? Let's go. So, credit cards lead to debt. Is that right? Right? We've all heard that. Man, probably from little kid on up until adulthood. And that's why we're in the situation we're in. No one told us, right, that these are banking tools that can be used to actually get us out of debt. So let's go ahead and show you how it's done. We do agree that $12,000 of credit card debt is debt. Is that correct? All right. Now, one of the issues as to why you're still struggling with that $12,000 and it's going to take you four years and thousands of dollars in unnecessary interest is because the bank taught you to segregate your income. So that $5,000, let's say, add your number, right? This is segregated. So man, you got to pay for emergencies, right? $100 a month. Uh, mortgage, $1,200 a month. Car is $600 a month. The credit card is $600 a month. Uh, this one, groceries, $1,250 a month. And of course, the bank wants you to save, right? $1,250 each and every month. And you're wondering why can't I get out of debt? Well, that's because your cash flow, when you divide up your income like this, is zero. But what if I showed you that instead of continuing in debt like you are doing things this way, what if I showed you that you could actually use the money you're getting, the income, in a greater, more velocitized, more leveraged way? Let me show you. If we were to instead... Instead of using our checking account traditionally, the fossilized way, let's use it the velocitized way and take this $5,000 and put it towards that balance. And then all the, ex the expenses that you have, instead of segregating our expenses, we're going to actually pay all of these expenses, right? from our line of credit. Now, I've got a question for you. Is savings an expense? No, it's not. All the rest of them, are they expenses? Yes, they are. Now, what we want to do is do we want to continue to place our savings inside of a black hole? Because each and every time you're keeping your money there, your money is losing value. So what we want to do is we don't want to be suckers, right? We don't want to be chumps. We want to make sure that the savings is coming to us. So let's go ahead and add on $1,250. And since we're already paying, quote unquote, our credit card, do we have the $600 monthly payment anymore? No, we don't. Well, where's that payment going? To us. So now we're going to add another $600. And in one fell swoop, now you have $1,850 in cash flow to pay this amount down. Now, can we go ahead and round that up to, let's say, $2,000? Now, $2,000 each and every month into your credit card equals what? When are you going to pay that $12,000 balance off? In about six to six and a half months. Is that correct? Because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're dividing it by the cash flow. We're taking that balance and dividing it by the cash flow. That's why it equals six months to get rid of this debt. Now, listen, you just got rid of this debt. And you know what that means? 
that the credit card companies are watching and they're saying, you know what? Let's give this person some more credit because they just paid it off enormously. You're welcome. On to myth number two, credit cards are a financial trap. Really? Well, a financial trap means you're stuck. And I remember my friend telling me a story that he was in California and he only had was a debit card. He didn't use his credit card. And lo and behold, somebody used his debit card and he couldn't get that money back for like six, seven or eight months. It was horrible. It was a horrible experience for him. It was thousands of dollars. I think it was $4,000, $5,000 that he couldn't get access to, right? Because it was on his debit card. All right. So, folks, financial trap means you're stuck. But with a credit card, guess what you get? You get cash back. You get rewards. Right. And you get fraud protection. If you had a credit card, if you had used this credit card, he wouldn't have gone through all that. All right. Plus, when you use your credit cards the right way, look at what happens. This limit right here that you're seeing. It becomes even more. So from 15K to 20K to 25K, you can be a victim of a credit line increase, especially when we make sure, okay, for those of you who love using the credit cards, make sure that you're underneath that 30% credit utilization ratio, right? Credit card companies love it when people abide by their rules. And I'm talking the top ones are make sure you pay us on time, which means early, and then make sure you are underneath that credit utilization so that we aren't nervous. A financial trap. This ain't no financial trap. This is the way to financial freedom, which brings us to myth number three. So let's go back because we're still going to defeat this loan over here. Remember, I saved the best for last, y'all. You can't use credit cards for wealth building. Watch this, okay? Because after you're done with this, paying it off, the balance is now zero. You are at $15,000 in limit, but you still got the loan over here at 6%. Now you may say, well, CJ, you know, usually the credit cards are at 21%, right? Let's just put the 21% here, interest. And you're saying, well, I mean, how is, how is the 20, 21%, how is that less than 6% and why would I do that? Well, the reason why you would do that is because you don't know how this one is calculated. Believe me, folks, I worked at a dealership. <laughs> you don't understand the math that goes on in car dealerships, all right? So trust me, you want to get rid of this as soon as you can, right? So whatever this minimum monthly payment is, right, let's go ahead and use the 15,000, maybe you want to use 10,000, maybe you want to be below the 30%, you must take whatever amount that you're comfortable with, okay, and place it towards the principal. Because when you're placing it towards the principal, this 6% is eating off of, now it's eating off of, let's say, 13,000 instead of the 18,000, which means you have saved hundreds of dollars in one fell swoop. And you say, well, CJ, if that's the case, let me just go ahead and use 10,000. You can do that. Absolutely. Remember, if you're trying to build credit, we want to be under that credit utilization. But if you know that the credit score goes up and down and up and down and you're not afraid to get rid of this stinking loan, this inefficient loan, then do it. Do it. Chunk. It's called the chunking principle. You take, let's say, 10,000 and you switch it over here and you say, I want it right here to this loan. 10,000. So now that it's 8,000 and you'll see the interest getting less and less. And over here, of course, you're, you're making 5,000. The expenses are 3,000. Uh, you're, you're keeping 2,000 each there each month. Now it's getting paid off very quickly. And oh, by the way, remember your cash flow, right? We're not doing the same. We're having the savings work for us. Now, what happens when this goes away? Is there life after debt? Of course there's life after debt. Go ahead and comment that. Hashtag Octothorpe. Life after debt. And because that's what it is. Now you can take maybe the same amount or even more, right? Remember that $10,000 you were, you were placing towards the loan? Now you can place it towards housing. Now you can place it towards a down payment. Now you can place it towards Paper stocks. Now you can place it towards real estate because this was not meant to stay stagnant. Money grows as it moves. 
Money grows as it moves. And as you utilize the line, now that there's life after debt, place this, replace this loan with asset. That's what the line was supposed to be used for anyway, for assets. See, now that you've gotten out of the mindset of, oh, I got to consume, I got to buy J's, I got to buy a car, I got to buy. Now you're realizing, wait a minute, if I buy something that's actually going to pay me, I can pay my bills through this instead of through that. And that is velocity banking. God bless you. Share this all around the world. We got plenty more in 2024.